game and not who might be allowed to play it was on most people's minds during the semifinals Friday. But that battle will soon take center court. In April, the Nebraska School Activities Association General Assembly will decide whether to keep a new policy that lets athletes compete in the gender they associate with or scrap it with a supermajority vote that restricts participation to the gender on the student's birth certificate. If guys are, that are born guys want to play in a girls, that doesn't seem very fair because like they're born like faster and stronger. The more we can move forward with progression, like things with inclusion, the better it is. Hannah Davis, a former athlete, applauds the NSAA board's 4-2 adoption of the transgender policy in January. She says high school athletics is about socialization as much as competition. It's hard to say that it's going to be an unfair advantage until we see it in practice. So for us to not even allow that change to take place, let's give it an opportunity to roll out and see what it actually does before we just knock it down. But others, including this former Iowa high school coach and athletic director, say it will hurt girls' sports. We won't have boys and girls' athletic teams. Uh, it'll just be one. And I think that would be seriously detrimental to girls' athletics because of simple physical size and strength of a male. One woman who didn't want to go on camera told me, quote, as a mother of a daughter, I would be ticked off if this is allowed. Another person says it's a tough issue. And another says they support the NSAA policy because it prevents the courts from dictating policy, which is where it may all end up. Both the ACLU and religious groups indicate they may file suit, depending upon what happens next. In Lincoln, Andrew Ozaki, KETV, Newswatch 7. If you would like to learn more about the NSAA current gender transgender athlete policy. We'll have a link to it on KETV.com. Just click on Andrew's story.